trade is obviously a huge part of that partnership. Our trade volumes total about $21 billion per year in goods and services, or around uh, 300 billion rand. Our trading profile is balanced with imports and exports roughly equal and wide ranging over hundreds of products. While other countries mainly part purchase uh, raw, uh, raw unprocessed commodities, the US, I like to think, is different. We buy cars, agri-processed uh, lychees, and high quality wines from South Africa, because they're really good. <laughs> Trade and services is also vibrant in tourism, in education, and in technology. Uh, and for my friends at the Department of Home Affairs who uh, tell me that they're more concerned about uh, what the visa regulations uh, did uh, in China, India, and other places, I want to remind them that we have 350,000 Americans who visit South Africa every single year. Uh, and anything that we can do to uh, ease uh, that traffic is only going to uh, be to the benefit of uh, South African job seekers. Um, Services are the bedrock of economies in both of our countries. Uh, I believe that trade uh, and services is only going to grow stronger. We're especially proud of the role uh, that AGOA, which I've mentioned before, has played here. And I know that you're all familiar uh, with uh, the challenges uh, that we've had, but I want everyone to uh, really think about the two-year uh, ramp, the 10-year the ten-year ramp that we uh, now are privileged to have. South Africa, uh, is included uh, in that 10-year renewal despite uh, all of um, uh, the, the difficulties. Uh, and this, of course, allows free access to uh, your goods to the uh, biggest, most powerful consumer uh, economy uh, that exists uh, anywhere uh, on uh, this planet. Uh, and it makes Africa a more competitive place overall to do business. Uh, as Minister Davies has frequently pointed out, South Africa in its genius has made the best possible use of tariff lines uh, through AGOA, sending a wide range of manufactured goods and high-value agricultural products to our country. We're working with South Africa right now to expand uh, and add new tariff lines uh, to products uh, in, uh, currently in our basket uh, and to uh, work with uh, producers of those products uh, to uh, simplify the chain. And I will tell you uh, that as someone who has grown quite fond of South African avocados. I intend to uh, make sure that those products are available. But it's been really uh, inspiring for me to go uh, to the floor of automobile plants uh, in South Africa, like the Mercedes plant and PE, the BMW plant, and to know that 65,000 uh, of those automobiles are finished every single year and shipped off to uh, the United States uh, to the tune of about $1.3 billion in, in imports uh, for you. And not only does that represent um, uh, an increase to a bottom line, but you're also creating a new generation of South Africans who are leaders uh, in manufacturing, and that's going to uh, serve to strengthen the spine of manufacturing across the country if we can just manage to take advantage of more lines and scale up. We're engaged with the South African government and the private sector to define what our relationship will become once AGOA expires as we work together to create prosperity in our markets. We have to remember. We really have to remember that 10 years will go by in a flash. And if we don't do the hard work now over the, over the course of the next three, four, five years uh, to design what that off-ramp might, might look like for AGOA, then we'll disadvantage uh, South Africans. And uh, I had this conversation with Minister Davies uh, yesterday. I think that there's a tendency uh, on behalf of bureaucrats on both sides of the Atlantic to have an attitude of, you know, first do no harm. Uh, but if you're... Uh, if you're being that uh, conservative, uh, if you're not working uh, with urgency, that means you're not uh, innovating uh, and the world is moving uh, very, very quickly past you. Because you can trust, you can trust that even though, even though we're about to see, uh, I think, uh, an aggressive transition uh, from things like TPP in the U.S. and the conversations that we're having uh, with uh, the Asian economies, you can trust that in Vietnam, they're going to continue to innovate and they're going to try to continue to figure out how to get more uh, US-based manufacturing in their country. Uh, and South Africa is no longer competing uh, just with your neighbors, uh, but with interests around the world who uh, are working with uh, incredible, incredible speed. It's long been understood that investment, of course, follows trade. As businesses discover the opportunities in markets due to increased flow of goods and services, they also begin to realize the benefits of increasing their presence uh, in uh, the market through investment. 
And with investment should come job creation that reduces poverty and brings about the economic transformation that we, that we just made mention of. One thing that I did not say uh, in the US that I'll uh, reinforce here, uh, too often I've been in two different conversations uh, in South Africa. I'll go in some spaces and everyone's talking about growth and I go in, in other spaces and everyone's talking about transformation without an appreciation that both of these things really should be working uh, in tandem. It kind of boggles my mind. Thank you.